Good morning, everybody. It's Positive Tuesday today, March 23rd, 2021. For Baron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Ben Dryden, and you're watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by ICAA. ICAA is your local social service organization that works together with individuals and families and the community to create and support local solutions for local needs. The goal is to help remove barriers so people can access resources, education, and services to increase financial security. For a full list of services, find them on Facebook or check them out on their website at IndianHeadCAA.org. Fitzy, good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm so fancy. <laughs> yeah, but you right. already know. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, in the fast okay. lane from L.A. to Tokyo. Oh, that song yeah, got stuck right. in my head for like two days. Maybe that should be in your theme song. I don't know. Yeah. I can't remember who sings it though. It yeah, doesn't matter. Do I. I don't know nothing about it. So what's going on with you? Anything? Uh, you know, it's funny. Well, not really funny. Just usually <laughs> I always have. Oopsie, moving my screen around here. I think I just screwed something up. It doesn't matter. Usually I have something going on, right? Or something. You know, it's been two weeks because last week mom had her uh, her popular right. Diane's Kitchen show. Uh, so that was last week and usually have something but it's been i don't know pretty nominal it's just not yeah we're doing our bible study still on sunday and i'm learning a lot i mean i'm not but i, I feel like i'm gonna at some point but you know it's just kind of it, it takes a while when you actually do a bible study to break things down and see the full picture and understand in context uh but yeah that's going well and home life's going well uh no i really don't have a whole <laughs> lot of something new going well, on how about live real exciting lives you and no. i you know kind of similar that way and yeah. i didn't do much either it was you know the warm weather this weekend again which was nice but it was really windy um you know i like basketball i watched a lot of basketball on tv college didn't do much. yeah college basketball Boy, gonzaga like man there's something else yeah i thought they were gonna get beat but you know I've, michigan's the last big 10 team in there and a lot of upsets and i love that i love the underdog yeah uh, you know getting in there I, I think it's fun it's it makes it exciting when a 15 beats a two and you know oral roberts who would have thought i mean i had to look up where they where they <laughs> i don't even remember now i mean some of these schools i never heard of and i think that's what's fun about it it, it um, you know any day anytime anybody can win yeah um, that's why that's what it teaches our kids you know i i think it's interesting go baylor no I don't think so, Julie. So. <laughs> I, we don't think so, Julie. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Shot you down. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks for commenting. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Wait, it's positive. I mean, good uh, luck. <laughs> um, well, hey, we, um, go, ahead. Well, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, e so we have a new chief deputy. That's kind of a positive thing, right? I mean, not that we have new, but it's just, you know, that whole thing is finished. And uh, obviously it was Steve Pank, the former, or now former Spooner Police Department captain, who is now Washburn County Chief Deputy Steve Pank. He's going to do a great job. I have no worries about that. He's a solid dude. Good cop. He already started? Yeah. Yeah, well, like I think it was on uh, th Thursday, I think, with the interviews. Friday, I think, is when he accepted. And I think he started on Monday. Uh, not a two-week notice, huh? I don't know how that stuff works. Like when it's like external or something. I have no idea how that stuff works, but that actually is funny you brought that up. Someone did ask me. Like, you know, really, that seems a little early. But again, I don't know how this stuff works, and maybe it was already yeah. kind of pre-planned. Not pre-planned, but in terms of, all right, if I do get this job. Right. So yeah, maybe that was true. a discussion from before. So, yeah, I don't know the details on that one, but. Uh, well, I didn't, you know, when I became sure if I was appointed by the governor, and when I got the call at 11 o'clock and. Um, you know, the story, go the story goes, the story goes, <laughs> um, you know, they said only one problem. I said, no, there won't be a problem. And they're like, you got to be the sheriff at three o'clock today. So I only gave my chief of race, like John Summerfield, you know, about a two hour notice. <laughs> I said, by the way, I'm gone. See well, ya. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I don't know, it's not the same, but it was right. But exactly. We were planning it. If it happened, this is the way it was going to go. Yeah. So. Maybe yeah. that was the plan with him and his chief. And, yeah, and uh, you know, congrats to him and glad um, that all worked out for him and, and uh, looking forward to some exciting things. And 
Mm -hmm. um, I haven't talked to him yet, but I need to get up there and congratulate him and, and welcome him to the, the, the brown, you know, get rid of the blue and you go to the brown, you know, yeah. <laughs> kind of the joke. I the didn't know that was a joke. Well, you know, with the sheriff's department and police departments, yeah. you know, now everything is, you know, big leagues and the sheriff's department and you get to go over. You know, it should you be a big deal. To patrol. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, so that's what's. Uh, well, and by the way, thank you. Thank you, Jody, for, you know, putting in who that artist was. Iggy Azale Azalea. Isn't that a flower or a plant or yeah. something? Yeah, I've I heard that on a commercial or something. I couldn't get it out of my head. So. Uh, yeah, obviously, congratulations to Topanga. It's going to be a, an asset to Washburn County. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to do with the captain's job. Hopefully that will be decided soon in Spooner. Um, it's going to be an interesting race, I think, for the Washburn County Sheriff's Office next year. Because Obviously, Sheriff Stewart has already stated that he was going to run. Um, but I don't know. I kind of got a funny feeling that everybody that has already applied will now twice in the last two years, which I believe were mostly the same people. I think, it's, I think there's going to be a lot of people running for sheriff. In right. a year. Well, so that'll be interesting to see. Uh, who knows? But right now, Steve Paint, congrats. Yeah, hopefully keep it in Washburn County, all the races up there. And well, no one right. wants to run Barron County. So I'm well, running, yeah. So there, we're, uh, we have breaking news. <laughs> no, I don't uh, think there was ever a question. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I'm going to have to pay attention to the Barron County Sheriff's Race because uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen to the show if you're not there. <laughs> well, I'll be here. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's get to a couple of things we want to, you know, talk about some some positive things today. There was this wow wall um, that we had put up on a story that was from the Spooner Area School District, and my daughter was a part of that actually. And then we had a follow up on that with Washburn County Deputy Warren Tuttle, and then he put in this great comment this morning on our Facebook page. I wanted to share that. And anyone that is watching right now, please, we we're going to go through a couple of our, our, our recent articles and or press releases. And Fitzy obviously is going to be speaking on that. But when we're finished, our main discussion today, really, we want to talk about positivity. I know it seems you know, self-serving <laughs> since it's Positive Tuesday. But, you know, we really want to take a second. So please let us know what is uh, something positive in the comments, either in your life or what you see or s something that you know. Um, and we want to discuss some of those things. So, But first, uh, recent articles and press releases we've had, and just, <clears throat> excuse me, authorities, this is the headline that we ran uh, authorities used gas to force suspect out of residence after he refused, refused to give up. This was a situation, I think, last Friday. I heard about it over right. the weekend. I saw all the call logs, but, you know, we don't run stories based on call logs. That's a little irresponsible. Uh, but I saw that, and then you put out a press release yesterday morning. So tell us a little bit about that or what you can tell us. Sure. Uh, well, yeah, it's an active case, and, and, and it will be charged, uh, I think, later today. Um, he's still uh, being held in the in the jail. Uh, we are called to a residence um, way down in the corner by Reeve, uh, which is if you go to Turtle Lake and then go down about 14 miles to the south, you hit Reeve, and we were uh, right on the county line. It was actually the Polk County line, and the Barron County line was on the, the Barron County side was the house. Um, for, started as what I would consider a verbal domestic, um, escalated into a male subject pointing a gun at a female, um, and then basically threatening law enforcement if they were to come and arrest him. Um, and the female did get out of the house with a, with a child. I don't know the age of the child off the top of my head. Um, so we att attempted to negotiate with them when our patrol deputies got there. It didn't go anywhere. Um, so we called our, our SWAT team out, our emergency response team, or SWAT. Uh, and they responded to this scene used our armored vehicles and that's a Baron Rusk team, members of the Rusk County Sheriff's Department and the Barron County Sheriff's Department together on that team. And um, they went down there and negotiated, um, created what we call a communication portal. Basically we used less lethal rounds or beanbag rounds and we poke holes in your window. Um, that usually gets people's attention. Um, <laughs> we knew he was in there and we got his attention and um, he refused to come up. He actually, during that time, called um, 911 and and made some more threats and um, ultimately wouldn't come out. Came to the door, wouldn't come out, wouldn't comply with us. He was under arrest um, for the charges. Um, and then ultimately we used gas um, to uh, flush him out. He came out and he was taken into custody. So it's really not gas. It's not like tear oh. gas, like on the show it's really oc 
but it's you know it's it's a gas still we shot gas and smoke fills it but it's really an oc spray it's not tear gas like you know you've seen on the show where we shoot tear gas into a crowd it's really oc yeah. spray. oh that's first it, of all that's what i thought it was mm-hmm. uh, so what is oc uh what is that it's, a, it's that you know the mace that you carry on your our belts or we used to carry uh-huh. you know your dad used to carry mace it's really that only in a large concentration it's all that is it's not oh. tear gas you don't oh. have to your house you can still live in your house you know that once the it dissipates you clean your house and it just doesn't wreck houses back in the day when they used tear gas not prior to me being in law enforcement that was in your house and it was bad for you it was, you know i think your house was had to be decontaminated for several days when oc when it dissipates in the air um you know it just burns your eyes and you can't breathe and makes mm. you cough mm. um but the, there is no lasting effect to it well i would have so changed my cool. headline had i known that well, it's still gas. It's still considered a gas. Okay. So that's, and that's what people understand. But it's not tear gas sure. from, you know, back in the 60s, things like that. Yeah. A uh, quick question. Why? You, you didn't say anything about a canine going in. Was some mm-hmm. not available? Or is this one of those things where, let me start over. I've seen things, uh, press releases from you before, or we've done stories before when we're looking through a criminal complaint and we see uh, that a canine ha- was used and it seems like oftentimes in these types of situations, w- was it not available or is this no because he had a gun? We don't want him to shoot the dog. How does that work or what, why was the, the canine not used? Right. Um, well, one is <clears throat> two of our canines weren't available. The third one, our third canine, the Russ County one wasn't available. Oh, the Barron okay. County one wasn't available. The third one did get there. Um, he was doing a, a patrol function at the time, and so his dog really wasn't available. We were um, getting ready to make that available, switching some people out uh, when the subject exited. And so we used um, some of other less lethal options, taser, sure. beanbag rounds. We didn't use those. We used the taser in this situation. We didn't use beanbag rounds, but those are options that are also, um, you know, fall in the category of the canine dog. Sure. Um, but yes, we're training. We have a canine dog on our team and he actually is, is training. It's new to our team of having a dog right in the armored vehicle with us. We're training on that and um, not this month, next month. We're actually putting the dog in the armored vehicle with us um, for the first time. So it's something we've always kept on the perimeter. We're we're moving that up for different situations so that we don't have to use lethal uh, options. And so how uh, we talked about this before, actually it was two weeks ago when you were on SWAT usage. I think this year already you were, if I recall, I think it was at five? Right, two yeah, weeks ago. Yeah. Right. So now you're up to uh, six now. Uh, six and three months. Yeah. Man, bizarre. Yeah. And again, I think I asked you a couple weeks ago. Can you attribute this to anything, or is it just, again just random, man? No, I just think it's it's you know, no, it's just random. I mean, we may not have another one the rest of the year. I mean, it's just how people respond. You know, if he comes out when our first deputy gets there and comes out on his own. You know, we don't we don't escalate to this thing. Right. So, um, and you know, a lot of people said, um, you know, or some people will question why we just leave him in there. He was in there by himself. Um, we weren't satisfied or under the belief that he would stay in there. We might he might go look for his wife or child sure. or whoever that is, and I didn't want that to go mobile. A sure. situation like that, you know, it doesn't mean somebody won't go back to the house. Um, to get, try to get some belongings. And so uh, a lot of things go into that decision-making that when we do that, and that's why we made the decision. One is you have to take him into custody. You committed a crime. Mm-hmm. And you just can't say, oh, we're going to walk away and we'll get you on Tuesday. Um, in some cases, you can if it's not the dangerous level, you know, if the danger isn't there. I mean, we don't arrest. We're, there's people on a board, you know, we said, oh, they, you know, we need to pick up, you know, Joe and Fred and Sam, yet, you know, there's on our list. Um, and we'll get them when we find them because they're not, they haven't committed a dangerous crime. We're just looking for them. They may have a warrant for their arrest, things like that. We can do that. In this case, we decided and we made the decision based on our team that, um, you know, we wanted to take this person into custody because we didn't want it to go a a mobile situation. Yeah. And with the uh, uh, unfortunate situation, I'm sure a lot of people know out in uh, Boulder, Colorado, uh, there was an officer that was shot um, uh, and killed. But again, first responder, right? He was the first one to see him. And that's his job. That's why what law enforcement does is just blows my mind. You guys are idiots. 
You're absolutely there's something <laughs> wrong with you because why, like who just runs like firefight? Who runs into the fire? And who runs towards a gun or someone that is shooting? Uh, I mean, I'm booking it the other way, man. Uh, and I might, you know, quick get my phone out and do a little live thing. But uh, no, I'm running <laughs> away. Uh, right. That stuff, man, you got to be so careful. So I'm so glad that this was resolved, that the individual was, you know, he's, he's living. And, and I'm glad that he's being charged with something, obviously. But he's alive to do that. I'm glad nobody got hurt. Because, man, one, do you think about that? Like, one, if I don't make this right decision right now, that one decision could mean the life of someone, whether it's uh, the, a suspect or... Uh, someone in the house or whether it's a law enforcement officer does that come into your mind when you're going through these situations in real time and do you think that boy i don't want to do this wrong or i mean how how does that work processing wise very much so every situation that's my job as sheriff to make sure 80 people go home the suspect goes home or goes to jail and his family or you know his friends are okay i mean whether it's an active shooter situation and our hearts go out to Colorado and that officer and those other people that yeah. uh, were deceased in that event. And, and, but that can happen anywhere. And that's why we train. That's why we have the equipment. That's why I, I fight for equipment for, you know, my people or whoever it is and, and why we train and we work really good with our police departments. We're having a, a, a big training in May. We're working with our police departments to, you know, make sure our tactics are good. We're bringing in a tactical instructor just on, you know, on room clearing and entering a house for a domestic and, and some training videos and things like that. So, yes, that definitely goes into play every time we go on the call. Mm. Um, you know, I got to make sure the sheriff's department people go home to their families. That's my role as sheriff. Uh, the victim is afforded all of his rights and we don't violate any of his rights, but still take him into custody. And that wife and child get to go back to their home or whatever it is. So. Mm. Uh, yeah, every day, all day, um, that's what I do as sheriff. Um, luckily, we don't have to think about that too much in Northwest Wisconsin. But yeah. as time change, you know, as the time changes, people get excited. And, and maybe we'll use our SWAT team a lot more. I don't know if that's what Hope the not. time mean or the change means and why we've used our SWAT team six times this year. I can't give you that answer. Hopefully, we don't use it again. But yeah, but I'm glad that it's will. available. Uh, Correct. Because actually, just using it. I don't know, in a weird way, I don't know if you can really correlate that, that having more SWAT team usage is because there's more just weird things. Some of it might just also be safety, like we're, we're, we want to make sure, and maybe this isn't what someone would consider a SWAT team type of a call, but like you just said, man, I got to get everybody home, including the suspect. We got to keep everybody safe. So it was a question, I think it already went away, from Mike, whether it's getting nice, crime will go up. Is there any truth to that? Well, speed definitely goes up when um, when the sun comes out. We're uh, we're not paying attention to it when the it's really warm. We got our window down, the music cranking, and we're not paying attention to the other things because we're like, oh, look at that, the farm field is doesn't have any snow in it. And right. Look at the trees, and now I can see a house through the trees. And so springtime uh, speeds go up, um, and you know, but will crime go up? Yeah, it can because more people are out. There's just more opportunities. If I see someone on Main Street and, you know, or, you know, more friends get together because we're not stuck in a house, things like that. So um, that's, yeah, mm-hmm. there's some truth to that. I don't know if it's scientific or not, but mm-hmm. yes, I think we're busier in the summer sometimes than we are in the in the winter just because there's more people out. Yeah. Uh, I want to get to this other recent article that you've done, homicide charges filed against man in fatal buggy versus truck crash. <laughs> but first, you're watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy presented by ICAA. ICAA is your local social service organization that works together with individuals, families, and the community to create and support local solutions for local needs. Their goal is to help remove barriers so people can access resources, education, and services to increase financial security. For full lists of services, find them on Facebook or check them out on the website at IndianHeadCAA.org. So uh, since it has been a couple of weeks, there was another press release that you had sent out, or maybe that was the one that, no, I think that was the one that you had sent out, homicide charges filed against man in fatal buggy versus truck crash. Unfortunately, we've had a few of these incidents with buggies lately, so is there anything that you can say or provide a little more insight into that situation? Well, I can tell you from uh, the Sheriff's Department standpoint, alcohol was a contributing factor in that crash. Um, And alcohol was a contributing factor in the crash in Washburn County. So I don't know what 
the there's a common denominator here and it's really not the horse and buggy and so <laughs> right I mean, I just, so i don't mean to laugh but because that's that's inappropriate right. but you know but, it's just, yeah, come on man <laughs> but it's it's yeah i agree and it, it irritates me a little bit and i'm trying to stay positive but man it's 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 sad and it's wrong and we've got to do something about it and man. and so but the contributing factor is alcohol is the contributing factor in some of these cases and so we've got to be careful when we drink and drive and that's all i'm asking people to do i'm not saying don't be go careful when you drink and drive right. so if you have a dozen beers you know be careful when you're driving <laughs> that's what it, i'm that's not what it saying there was a dozen beers involved in this i'm not right. saying yeah. that yeah i know in general in cases you know we've got to take the only crimes that went up and we've talked about this a bunch of times now is alcohol cause drug crimes yeah. and underage drinking and so there's some factors here, you know, domestics didn't go up and all those other things didn't go up. So alcohol is a contributing factor here and we've got to be careful out there on the roads and we've got to do something about it. These are 100% preventable, preventable tragedies if people don't drink and drive. Uh, I'm not saying accidents don't happen because accidents happen all, all the time. You know, we had 350 some accidents last year. A lot of those weren't alcohol. Accidents happen, you know. But we got to pay attention on the roads, away from our phones, away from the alcohol, things like that. So, um, so in all seriousness, alcohol was a contributing factor in this crash, and the district attorney charged it. Um, and so we'll wait for the outcome of this case. And um, but it's it's a little irritating. It's it's frustrating to go to these crash scenes and have our officers deal with this, and then realize alcohol was a contributing factor. Yeah. You know, because we feel bad. It's our job to go out there and stop some of this. And we go out there and patrol and then we make arrests and people get upset and people get upset with us because we're arresting too many people for drunk driving or whatever it is. So um, you just, you know, we get both sides of it on any issue. There's two sides to the story, you know, whether it's mass or it's OWIs or it doesn't matter. whatever right. it is. Republican, so, Democrat, cops. Not, yeah. I mean, it just it is. There's always two. Right. There's always two sides. People don't want us to enforce mess. People want us to enforce mess. People don't want us to be too hard because our bars need the business. And if cops are too hard to know WIs, the bar business goes down. Well, I'm keeping our roads safe and trying to keep people safe. Yeah. And I'm not a bar owner. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a you problem. <laughs> well, it's not. I mean, I want to work with these businesses, but all people I'm saying go out to these bars. We promote you know, having fun and going out and being smart on the lake and, yeah. and supporting our businesses. We're just find somebody to drive your truck or your car or have an boat. exit strategy. That's it. Right. Just have an exit strategy. That's a good way of putting it. Uh, yeah. uh, there was a question here. Uh, it actually, if I put it up, it's going to cover literally the whole screen here. Right. So, I'm trying uh, to read it right now myself. Yeah. My, well, uh, I'm just going to try to put it up and see what happens. I don't even know what this is about. Uh, Either do I. I'm reading it. There. I don't know. There we go. The camper got stolen and I called it in and an officer I talked to said there was nothing they can do. Why? I also got told if I went and got it back, if I found the camper, I would go to jail. That didn't make sense to me. I asked the cops so it was okay to steal people's things. I never got an answer. Um, oh. The camper is mine. It sounds like it. my officer or... or maybe I'm assuming it's Barron County, right? Yeah, we're assuming it's Barron County. Um, be happy to talk to that person offline sure. about that. Um, it sounds like maybe it was a civil deal. Maybe it wasn't. I think um, those civil deals, we get put in a bad spot. Law enforcement does all the time with child custody cases, civil cases. I let so-and-so and boyfriend borrow my car. We now broke up. We're not going to get your car. I mean, you've already let somebody use it once. Once you've let that civil action take place, we can't do anything from a law enforcement standpoint. We get we get pulled into a lot of situations, which frustrates me as sheriff, which frustrates our deputies. Um, civil cases a lot. We get pulled into a lot of different directions. I'm not saying that's what happened here right, right. at all. I'm saying feel free to call me. My 715-637-6737 is my direct number. It's on my business cards. Again, um, Call the sheriff's department and ask for me. I'll be happy to talk to you. Obviously, if you call right now, I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> um, well, we can do it. We can do it live. We'll do it. Yeah, we can do live, live sheriff's department. Hear me <laughs> out. Yeah. So, and so we'll, I'll help you walk you through it, but it kind of sounds sim, civil, um, sure. but it, it's frustrating. Uh, child custody disputes, we get brought into a lot of those, a lot of those. That Some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, and that's what we kind of bring out on this show is, talk about some of the things that you don't see us doing and yeah. our dispatchers handle a lot of calls and a lot of 
child exchanges and there's just not a lot of things we can do if you don't have a, a piece of a court order document there's nothing we can do i can't tell you well we agreed every third weekend i would get the kids and i'm like well what does the third weekend from what date did you start you know right. I, it's very frustrating and i get the frustration on their end um because they had this deal and someone broke the deal but um civil things require civil court so yeah. um yeah, I wish we could have a deputy to hire just civil cases. It's really not a law enforcement issue, so we really shouldn't have deputies doing it either. But we're getting more and more trained in, in civil orders and and and, yeah. and family things are very, very emotional and very, you know, they can turn into bad situations quick. So um, and if it wasn't a civil thing, you know, we're happy to work it out. I'll work it out with you. Um, people can call me and that's that's how it goes up. You don't like the yeah. offer. The answer then i have a captain and a chief deputy who who handle the complaints if you don't like what they tell you come up the ladder to the sheriff um and we'll work and after on that it. if you don't like what 50 says you just call me <laughs> you just call ben yeah i'll take care <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um but yeah, give give the sheriff's department a call and, and ask for me and we'll help we'll, we'll, we'll walk you through some of that but let's get into some positive yeah stuff. so i talk. have something for you a positive well actually first of all thank you again as always for doing these and to mm -hmm. walk through and talk about these things because that that mean it's so insightful uh, i appreciate it i know a lot of other people appreciate it but yes we want to talk about some positive things today uh, a little over a week ago i ran a story uh i should have written down the headline but it was about the wow wall and that wow. is at the spooner um spooner school District middle school that these Where your kids go to school yes right where the kids <laughs> go to school. And that, that three students did and one of them yes is our daughter uh, I mean, there's got to be some benefit to being the daughter of a, a the publisher of the most read news outlet in Northwest Wisconsin. See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't catch that. <laughs> point, <laughs> <what you said. laughs> yeah, but it was the school who was the one that published or, or that originally did it, and we just you know posted something on it. Well, then it was really cool. So first of all, that was awesome, and it's on our website. But also, um, I was like, I think the next day, so my, our daughter Riley she comes home and says there was a cop or a sheriff that came and saw us today and i'm like oh boy <laughs> what's what's going on that's I mean, be great hey guess what dad <laughs> yeah i know now rally she's a rule follower uh but she is precocious she has a beautiful brain and i love it when she uses it and i wouldn't be surprised if maybe she challenges some people including teachers that maybe don't like it um so anyway we figured out it was warren tuttle after she kind of just described what it was and he stopped in and asked if he could submit a letter to get published on the wow wall which was meant to inspire people, is meant to, to uh, post positive things. Uh, it, it's a really cool thing. I would strongly recommend reading that art or that post. And he, he, they said, that's perfectly fine. Just send something in. So we got it put on the Washburn County Sheriff's Office letterhead. So that was uh, Washburn County Deputy Warren Tuttle. And he also went and bought three $10 McDonald's gift cards for them. And sent this nice letter, and I asked him if it was all right if I published that. So I did that yesterday, and that's on our website now and just recently on Facebook. But I also wanted to share this because he commented this morning on our Facebook page, Warren Tuttle did. And this is what he said. These young ladies deserve recognition for their creation of the wow wall. Today, there is so much negativity and hate shown throughout our country. It is refreshing to see Someone searching for a little positive things that are happening every day, everywhere. I think we could all take a lesson from these young ladies. On most days, I make contact with several people throughout the county. Many of these contacts I'm meeting are people when they are at their lowest and most despairing, despairing time of their life. It was nice to meet these young ladies. They remind me that I, too, need to look for the positive little things happening around me every day. And I thought that was so cool, right? Because we talk about that and words matter. And it's, I mean, the fact that it wasn't just a real quick thing that he did, just like, hey, here's a text, good job. I mean, he went out of his way to go to the school, got a picture, then went to McDonald's, got this, then wrote this letter. I'm pretty sure he's got other stuff to do, uh, you know, in his off time. So I thought that was really awesome, and I just wanted to make sure that I shared that, not only for what those girls did, because it wasn't just Rally, it was Rally and, uh, 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 oh, now I'm blanking on their names, Eva and Michaela. Uh, they did a great job there, but then someone recognizing it. And think of what that positivity is from a law enforcement standpoint to now these girls, right? Yeah. I mean, how cool is that? So uh, I don't know. Then we wanted to repay that by giving Warren Tuttle some recognition. 
And yeah. boy, it's so simple, right? Those girls yeah. did something and then were entitled to something and then we did something. If everyone just kind of pays it forward, man, you can have such a positive impact on someone. And that's why we started this show, really. I mean, we started this show during the during the pandemic and during this lock-in. And we just said, you know what, there's got to be something that we can do to just make people have a little bit better day. And we just came up with Positive Tuesday and we just started doing it. But You came up with that, by the way. I mean, <laughs> so if anyone doesn't like it, they can blame you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but this is what we want is just go make a difference in someone's life today, any day. We need more of this. Warren's right. We need more of this in the in the world. Everybody's got to do it. Uh, you know, I attended a meeting last night that didn't go real hot at a, at a local mm. school district, and people were upset about masks and 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 it just it's just we've just got all got to take a step back. We're we're getting to the end of this COVID thing. I hope. I mean, I hope it doesn't spike. I hope it doesn't. But you know, whether you like it or not, this is where we're at today. And yeah. we've just got to all take a step back and, and realize we can make a difference in someone's life. We just got to get along together. We're all on the same page. We're all on the same planet. We're all here together. Um, but I read an article on uh, from Marshall Clinic about, um, you know, the pandemic and, and depression and all this. And it's a, and stories of positivity that came out of, of this. And I thought about what we did and I, hopefully we've changed some people's lives. I, I mean, that's what we want to do every day in law enforcement and, and the media. And sometimes you get a bad rap. Sometimes we get a bad rap for things that we do. Um, but we're just doing it to try to make a difference and to try to teach people, you know, this is bad and don't do it this way. And, and what Warren did could change those three girls. Yeah. and what they want to be in their life i mean who yeah. knows how it how it's going to affect yeah. them you know those three girls and so i think it's the little things that make a big difference yeah uh, we've said that from the beginning you don't yeah. got to go out and make this huge grand thing and you know spend thousands of dollars it's you know buying a kid a malt or not even buying them something just patting right. them on the back right. and doing them a good job right. they'd have reacted the same way if you wouldn't have bought the mcdonald's gift card but he's like they deserve something for doing this and that wall wall is pretty cool i i text you when i yeah. read the article i'm like that is sweet that's exactly what this world needs is more of that and this yeah. and you know people being friends and working it out and and there isn't anything more positive than that wow 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 wall yeah right i have a hard now. time with that too yeah <laughs> no we all kind of need that and again so that impact on their lives it's not just from a, a citizen to a law enforcement uh, person but Man, just the, the feeling that they get and to be recognized, because anyone could do this, like a parent, like I probably should have <laughs> written something or something. But, man, I mean, it's, I don't know, law enforcement, uh, I, again, I don't know why you guys do what you do. It's stupid, actually, because it's, <laughs> no, it. nobody would want to do that job, like nobody. And, uh, I mean, you see, I mean, you're constantly around negativity. You're, you're seeing people sometimes at their worst moments of their life. You're, you, you, you're going into situations where you don't know what's going to happen, and every traffic stop could be a thing. Uh, man, I, I can't imagine anyone doing that job. But then to try to still stay positive, I would think that every cop is cynical, like crazy and negative. Because, I, I mean, you would be too, like anyone. Anyone who's watching right now, if you're not, law, not in law enforcement, in six months you would just, like, hate everybody. Because, <laughs> man, everybody's the worst. But then to still stay positive about it, man, that's pretty cool. Well, and it, and that's why you see cops at a fatality laughing, because we use humor to take yeah. away some of that stress on us. And it's not that yeah. we're laughing. Not laughing it, right. Yep, totally right. get it. Yep. But that's how we deal with it, of just watching this dead person and watching this family react to their dead friend or yeah. son or daughter, or whatever yeah. it is. And so people are like, wow, those cops are just sitting around laughing. I'm like, no, we're trying to control hang in there and hold it together and sometimes humor comes out and maybe not the most appropriate space um but uh, there's a gallows humor or something like that it's called um but that Ooh. just happens and yeah. and we try to catch ourselves and we try to but we're humans too um we're all yeah. humans we're all created equally i mean we can go through a lot of things yeah but, but it's how you process I mean, it right well it's yeah and, and, <laughs> i mean you can't be just, just sitting down bawling and crying uh, when you're doing this stuff, you got to still, I mean, so yeah, there's got to be a way just to, to get through this moment. Right. And, you know, you know, our teachers have done such a great job and everybody's job is important. Uh, nobody's job is, but that's what we do when we go to these crime scenes. We go, we hit people some of at their lowest moments. We try to change them. You know, I'm, I'm very concerned about methamphetamine. 
right now. Um, I don't think we've talked enough about it. I think the next mm. couple of shows, you're going to see us talking more about methamphetamine. Okay. Um, hopefully not from arrests, but, you know, I'm reading what Chippewa County and, and Russ County did. You know, they've arrested like, I don't know, 20 people in the last 30 days. 22 or like in that. less than three months, I think. We're just, yeah, I, I think I believe it was meth related. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. And so it's Russ County. I don't think we, yeah, we, we, we quit talking about some of the proactive stuff, and, and that's my goal. My goal for the next, uh, you know, three or four months this summer months is to really hit it proactively um, with some things. And we've got to be more proactive in what we're doing. But I need everyone's help to do that. That's another reason why I do this show is to reach out to some people and say, hey, you know what? We've got to reach out to some of these people on math. We've got to report them. Sometimes jail is the best thing to reach the bottom, to bring them back up. We have great programs in our jails. We have uh, different things we can help people. Um, you know, we can't, you know help people along but um yeah heroin's another awful drug that's a comment that just showed up there uh, we're not seeing a lot knock on wood a lot of heroin in our area um but it's close to hayward it is i mean but we're right on that line that spooner rice lake line is on that edge of that heroin meth and um but we're going to talk more about meth we've got to talk a lot more about it mm -hmm. um because i'm very i can see it starting to pick up and i can see our drug unit becoming busy and so I think that's something in the future that we got to watch on and be aware of, but it's going to take a village, man. I mean, I, I never understood that until really you dig into it and do some product. It takes a village to do this. Um, <laughs> well, I'm hoping I have a good attitude and, and, you know, some days it gets the best of me too, but, um, it, but that's your support you got behind you with wives and kids and friends and, and the community and, and we appreciate everybody that reaches out in this community and supports us and, mm -hmm. you know, our police chiefs and everybody that's out there working together to get the same job done. Mm -hmm. And we've just got to do it together. And I, I don't know, I'm on a soapbox now because no, I'm really I totally get it. Together. I really do. And I, I was actually just thinking while you were talking, I was thinking about something else. Uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> about uh, about uh, uh maybe some guests that we could have on, et cetera. But first, I just wanted to say thank you, Larry. We just got finished talking about words matter. Uh, that was a great compliment, and, and, you're, and you're absolutely right, Larry. Uh, Fitzy has a great attitude, and I'm pretty sure – well, maybe you do, actually. I don't know. That'd be great. We should talk to your wife. We should, oh, my gosh, we should have your wife on. No, that would should. be fantastic. She's got a job. She's too busy. Yeah, she's got it. We'll, we'll make some time. Uh, but I mean, I'm pretty sure you just don't wake up and go, hey, all right, it's all about it. Man, you got to work at that stuff. You do. But then when you start doing it, you really, it's, it's, it's amazing how infectious that is, not just other people, but to yourself. Then you just kind of start giving more compliments, you know, and you kind of realize it. So uh, that's awesome. We should get some, uh, I think we're on like idea five now for our t shirts, which we'll probably never do. <laughs> Some things with, you know, meth messages or something. And I thought of one the other day as well. We should have like a, a Team Fitzy and a Team Ben shirts, right? Yeah. You know, kind of like the, I don't know, what was that? Werewolf movies or, what uh, man, see, now I'm forgetting that one too. It's one, it was a pop culture thing for like five years. Everyone read the yeah. books and it was like Team Jacob or Jason against someone. I thought we should do that. And then we can see, you know, how many people buy your shirts versus Team Ben shirts. And then we just <laughs> donate to something. But then I ruled it out because I realized that we should do yours in blue because law enforcement and mine in red. And like, wait a minute, Bloods, Crips. Yeah, we probably shouldn't <laughs> have shirts. <laughs> we went to write the gangs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you know, that would kind of create some divisiveness. And it was just meant to be, you know, something we'd raise money for. But yeah, we decided against that. Oh, yeah. Twilight. Thank um, you, man. Jody is on it today. She is uh, killing it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of it. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen all those, Fitzy. Uh, no, that's no. not my <laughs> I have, I'm not. Uh, So, All right, like, man. Uh, anything else that you want to – so we're obviously going to be talking a little bit about uh, meth coming up. Um, we'll be back, obviously, next week. Uh, any final words? Anything else that you wanted to share today? No, I, I just appreciate it. You know, we've had some tough cases over the last couple of weeks. I just want to give a shout out to my team from our dispatchers to our jailers to our patrol. Um, they all handle it. The dispatcher takes the calls. Patrol goes to it. Jail gets the, you know, the person we arrest and has to deal with that. And and they handle it great down there. Um, it's such a, a flawless, seamless process that our mm. team has put together. Um, but we can't do it without the community behind us. And I say that every week. The community means the world to us. 
Um, but it's it's words matter, and I think that's what if we're getting a shirt, we're putting that on there. Words matter. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the little things we do that make a big difference. So go out and make a big difference. Um, Five three seven three one zero six. The guy wants to know what her number is. Belinda, what, the, she was the one who was asking yeah. about it before. Yeah, he, he, five three seven three one zero six is our non emergency <laughs> number. You can always call that and ask to be transferred to me. Um, when, we're finished with, me when we're finished, <laughs> when we're finished with the show, just go yeah. back and and slow yeah. it down a little bit. So yeah, but, yeah. And by the way, do you guys? Yeah. I, I know that jailer dispatchers have said I've talked to some of them before. I think you did a story on like like three or four years ago, and they said it's really bizarre because. We never really know the ending or the outcome of something. We mm -hmm. get all the calls and we get all this stuff and we're, we're organizing, we're doing all this, and it's a little chaotic for a little bit. And then, and then we don't hear really anything after all, so we just go home to shift. We have no idea what happened. Is that something right. that you have and maybe like an internal thing? Or, you know, we kind of want to keep everybody in the loop on some of these things. Or is that not got, from a liability standpoint, is that bad or something? Or no, have you I heard any of your jailers ask about or dispatchers ask about that? Sure. On Friday night, I stopped in after the. Uh after the SWAT call out mm -hmm. and just talk to our dispatchers, tell them when they did a good job. And then they ask a couple questions and with technology, it's a little easier. We're, we're, we're reporting some of that. They can see some of our cameras out our front windows so they can see some things going mm -hmm. on. They don't have the, the, no, no audio with that. So, um, but yeah, we try to, to have some closure with them. Um, it helps them process it yeah. and, and deal with it. So it's, it's always important that we, we send all of our press releases to every member of our department too, so that they know exactly what I'm talking about. So that's something that we've done uh, for a lot of years now. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, just go out, make a difference today and every day and um, get along with somebody, invite someone to um, coffee that you don't disagree with or that you disagree with and, and, you know, have a cup of coffee, even though you disagree about something yeah. that's, let's go make a difference today and appreciate uh, allowing us to have this show on Ben. You always yeah. give me compliments, but you know, and really yeah, it's your show. And, you know, ICAA for sponsoring us. And, yeah. and we hope we give them enough, you know, credit for making this show happen. Yeah. Uh, by the way, for anyone watching still, uh, see, Fitzy says it's my show when he's on camera. <laughs> but when the camera turned off, it's not the case. Oh, I'll yeah. decide who's going to be the guest. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what topics we're talking about. We're talking about meth. <laughs> okay, it's your show. <laughs> um, someday you're going to send me a script and I'm going to say, nah, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> For Barron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Ben Dryden, and you've been watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by ICAA. Thank you, Jerry. That was very nice of you. Um, ICAA is your local social service organization that works together with individuals, families, and the community to create and support local solutions for local needs. Their goal is to help remove barriers so people can access resources, education, and services to increase financial sec financial security. For full list of services, find them on Facebook or check them out at IndianHeadCAA.org. And by the way, we're going to have a whole bunch of uh, articles. I was talking to Tom uh, Thomas Nelson from ICAA. He just sent a whole bunch of articles uh, about more information about ICA. We're going to start running those every Tuesday. It's going to be cool, so you make sure you want to check those out. Thanks for you for everyone for watching, and we'll see you back here next week where we promise we'll do a little bit better. So until then, stay safe, stay positive, and as always, have a blessed day. <laughs>